This time on Airshow, Randy launches a Russian rocket. It's like a fire-breathing dragon. And gets lost in the clouds. I don't know where he went. Big air bomb. Deadly weather. He's pushing through to try to make it. Somebody heard from Pete. Threatens Pete's first show of the season. I don't think he'll make it in here. And Marcus and Carol roll the dice uh. with a risky flight. It's minus 20 up there. Over the Rockies. Encountering severe headwinds. Mama said he never make it. That spirit, no tears to cry. Too young, too dumb to listen. Cold courage strapped in a trap. Some sky wax and sage. Smoke clears and I roll away. Icarus the green must fly today. Must fly today. Watch up, left landing. Two is on a uh, right bay. The Patriots touched down at the California International Air Show. We made it to Salinas. Another week, another air show. How you doing? <laughs> the weather's good, the sun's shining, no clouds, the jets are all running good. But the private squadron of L-39s hey, look at that. aren't the only jet at here. A Russian rocket. We have visual on you threatens to steal the spotlight. And it's flown by Patriots team owner, Randy Howell. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Randy decided to pull his favorite jet out of retirement. Back in the early 90s, after the fall of the wall, I brought six MiG-17s into the US. A deadly fighter, the Soviet MiG-17 claimed hundreds of lives in the Cold War. It was feared for its speed and agility. There's a lot of Vietnam veterans that say, the last time I saw one of those flying, he was shooting at me. The last time Randy got to fly the MiG at an air show was more than a decade ago. September 10th of 2001, the day before 9-11, and we were shut down because we were flying MiGs, the Afghans were flying MiGs, and it was a bad combination. Very uncomfortable airplane. They did not think about the pilot. They thought about how, what do we need to do to fit this giant engine in here? You guys figure out how to drop her, you gotta ask Randy. Yeah. To get here, the MiG had to fly with fuel pods under its wings called drop tanks. Ready? But before Randy can practice Ready? aerobatics, yep. okay, go. the tanks have to be removed. We removed the drop tanks because if you pull more than four Gs, you can do damage to the airframe and the tanks. It's not just a simple trigger mechanism, huh? Not in English. But no one can figure out the Russian labels in the cockpit. What do you think, you want to arm it? Yeah. What could go wrong? The drop tanks were actually made of plywood and could be released at the start of a dogfight to give the MiG more maneuverability. Well, why don't you Google what that says? Eject, drop, MiG-17. They don't need to really speak Russian. If they can learn how to read it, they'll be fine. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Oh, Finally, the MiG is ready to rage. Eighteen hundred miles north, Super Dave Matheson has managed to outrun a massive thunderstorm, bearing down on his next air show site. Radio, show bus, wind check, please. There's a massive storm coming in. A heavy hail, warning, and thunderstorms. That's the challenge. Got to get to the show. Miss the show, you don't get paid. But uh, fly through this stuff, you get killed. So they're trying to get rid of the snowbirds and the hangers and get us in the hangar. Hail will destroy this airplane. For any air show, weather is the biggest enemy. Thanks, Back brother. Climb. Snowbirds to the rescue. <laughs> Thanks, brother. And weather is everything. Okay. Windshield up. If you're an air show producer. Holy cloly, is it cold? Veteran producer Darlene Hamry has spent the last two years planning. They can come to the gate for a refund. Ah! For a two-day event. You don't need a roadway, do you? Do you want us to pile on that? 
Oh my God, stressed is the word. Well, it's pissing down out, out here right now, like really bad. <laughs> the last thing you want is a rain out. I got people wanting uh, refunds already. Some shows, if it's really bad, pilots don't get paid. It's, that's brutal. The business is tough enough. I need 4,000 people through my gate in order to make this show a go. Let's hope we get it. On the other side of the Rocky Mountains. Okay, so what is your route? Pilot Marcus Payne and wing walker Carol Pilon prepare for their most daring flight of the season. Well, we'll touch base today. Okay. Getting to their next show. Now I gotta get to Vanderhoof, British Columbia. It's a challenge. There's a few mountains. I think the Rockies, right? <laughs> Carol Stearman biplane is one of a kind. Because after every performance, her fragile cloth-covered aircraft is transported to the next show in an unusual way. She takes the wings off and she puts the airplane in a trailer and she drives it. But Carol's truck keeps breaking down. This truck and I have not had a good history together. Shoot. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. With her next show 400 miles away, over some of the toughest terrain in North America. Oh no, I'm going, going way George. past Prince George. Carol is nervous. Big picture always needs to be about our safety. This is a 70 year old aircraft. Carol and Marcus decide to roll the dice. Carol is not gonna trailer it to Vanderhoof, so I'm gonna fly it. So fly safe All and right. have a fun right. trip. All right, <laughs> have a fun trip. I'm giving myself a freaking break. Yay, Carol, good decision. I've flown from Alaska through BC to the States many times. It's majestic, but not a lot of places to land. A lot of mountains. Pacific Radio, German 65263. We have a two hour capacity. It can fly for two hours. So with a nice tailwind, it can go a couple hundred miles. With a headwind, maybe not. Pacific Radio, German 65263. Countering severe headwind. That pilot can make or break me and they better make me. In Salinas, it's practice day for the jet team. Airbus makes 17, 280 at 11 knots. But all eyes are on Randy and the MiG. Yeah, MiG Airbus, and we're ready to attack. Go ahead and proceed uh, via Charlie to runway eight. With 6,000 pounds of deafening thrust, the MiG leaps into the air. It's got a good look to it, you know? It has 47 degree of sweep in the wing. Yeah, I'm a pretty lucky guy to get to fly it. Randy's put together a tight routine of 15 maneuvers that show off the MiG's incredible handling. But with the external fuel tanks off, he can't waste time. And the MiG has the box. The MiG doesn't carry much extra gas, and Randy has a big ending plan, only possible because of the MiG's secret weapon. The MiG has an afterburner. This was a critical development. So it dumps in about twice the amount of fuel, but it gives about 30% more thrust. It's, it's pretty impressive to watch flying. And big setting up for the last pass. Randy makes a low pass, building up speed. He kicks in the afterburner, and the jet climbs to 10,000 feet in 31 seconds. When you throw the MiG in afterburner, it's a real kick of the pants. It's power like you've never felt before. An afterburner injects raw fuel into the exhaust of the jet engine, causing a rocket-like explosion at the back. But an afterburner has a huge 
huge downside. It sucks gas at twice the normal rate and could empty the fuel tanks if Randy isn't careful. Burning fuel is not my favorite thing about this. Left downwind for two ticks and land. Randy returns to the airport, and the boss couldn't be happier. It was great to fly the MiG today in practice. I can't wait to get it in front of the crowd tomorrow. Three off one tower. In Fort St. John. So we haven't heard from Pete yet. Air show producer Dar Hamry is waiting for her last pilot to arrive. I worry because I'm an air show mom. Pete McLeod is near the end of a three-day, 2,500-mile flight from Ontario. He's pushing through to try to make it for the show, and you know we got thunderclouds all around us. Somebody heard from Pete. What did Pete say, please? Pete disappeared from the air show circuit two seasons ago to fly the world's fastest motorsport, the Red Bull Air Races. Racing at speeds of 350 to 400 kilometers an hour, uh, low level, high G's in the corner. Now, waiting for his chance to requalify, Pete's back on the road flying air shows. 12 o'clock. Oh, you're the Hello. It's pretty right now. The storm forced Pete to land at another airport. There's a huge storm coming, man. No, I, I'm looking at it. I mean, it looks pretty black. Whatever they're reporting. Might be just coming in. Yeah. A lot of pilots have been killed pushing it, trying to get to that show. And the last thing you want to do is go anywhere near a thunderstorm. But Pete thinks there's a hole in the weather. Uh, he's going to give it a shot, so he's coming over right now. So I don't think he'll make it in here. We'll see. Thunderstorms, packing hail, and powerful winds have surrounded Fort St. John. Two hours ago, pilot Pete McLeod decided to try to outrun the storm. Sorry, I missed your call. Please leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Now, he's almost an hour overdue. I'm worried for two things. First of all, his safety is number one, and second, for my show. Pete is one of the stars of my show, and I want him here for it. Red Bull 84, show bus. Red Bull 84, show bus, you there? You don't want to let the crowd down. You don't want to let the producer down. So you got to balance those odds between killing yourself and making it to the show. Show off for the late fourth with you. Forced to fly around the storm, Pete arrives late, but in one piece. Hey, Rebel 84. When I saw Pete coming through the clouds, I was ecstatic. Track your discretion to taxi way off. Super glad to be here. I mean, the weather coming like this, uh, for show of the year, I'm actually going to get to fly at, so I didn't want to miss it. He's already missed his first three shows of the season after breaking his leg skydiving. For me, this year's been a bumpy start, and it's great to be back. Pete's still pushing his body to pull off this show. It just isn't 100%, so if you see me limping, it's because it hurts and he doesn't want to disappoint his air show mom. Not only is it actually setting up to be my first air show that I'll actually get to fly this summer, you know, it's Dar's show. Come see me. <laughs> 10 years ago, Dar gave Pete his first gig. I was meaning to call you from uh, Wetaskiwin. I'm really so. glad you're here. I'm glad you finally made it. 200 miles to the south, Pilot Marcus Payne has avoided the thunderstorms. I love flying the steerman. I love flying that open cockpit. But he has to steer clear of 10,000 foot peaks. I have to fly high to get over those peaks. And it's minus 20 up there. But I'll tell you what, you can only handle that cold so long. It's tough flying, man. Marcus is ferrying his boss's biplane across the Rockies to their next air show. Everything has to come together. I am trusting Marcus. This is not a good traveling airplane. This radio, German 65263. 
countering severe headwinds. Marcus has to manage the Stearman's limited fuel range. I need to amend my arrival time 30 minutes. It's a little dicey up there because I only have two hours worth of gas. And if I encounter a huge headwind, it's more challenging because there are fewer places to safely put down. Vanhoef traffic, red Stearman, seven miles to the east, inbound. After an epic flight, Marcus eases the old biplane back on the ground. It was a beautiful flight, actually. The gamble has paid off. <laughs> what a ham. <laughs> I love my airplane. It's where I work. It gives me freedom. And for the first time all season, Carol doesn't have to build her airplane. Airplane's in the hangar, and I get some chill time. With five days before her next show, Time is finally on the wing walker's side. In California, Randy's just returned from a thrilling ride. Yeah, that's what I've been practicing for, right there. In his first air show jet. Brand new 1959 MiG. Have a good one, buddy. But as his team gets ready to launch, lead pilot Wilbur brings the upbeat mood to a crashing halt. She didn't go over the handlebars. She just fell to the left while going downhill at about 20 or 25. Wilbur's wife is in the hospital after a serious accident. She had just climbed a hill and was descending when she crashed. I was shocked because I know her well. She's just in a state of just trying to heal. She's regained consciousness, but she hasn't said a word. So now I have family obligations. <clears throat> and I've got obligations to the team. If Wilbur can't lead the formation, um, the team may not fly. I don't have a backup. Everybody's relying on me to be there. So my game plan is to fly back and forth all weekend. So my gut says I need to get home. Wilbur will have to fly 200 miles to get back to his family after today's practice, then return in time for tomorrow's air show. I'm very happy that Wilbur's going to be here to lead the team. He's got a lot going on in his personal life, and I know this is hard on him. OK, so I, that's, that's what I'm doing. Going into this practice, all eyes are on Wilbur. Will he be distracted by this family emergency? Airbus, Patriot 1, taxi 6 to runway 08. Patriot, go ahead and proceed via Charlie to runway 8. I have to have 100% trust in Wilbur. Delta in the back, taxi, thanks. In aviation, there is nothing more dangerous than formation flying. It's six jets out there. It's, it's extremely complicated what we're doing. I'm going to make a pass from left to right down the show line with the Delta. Check out the top. Most pilots, when they're flying, try to stay well clear of other airplanes. We intentionally go fly four feet beside each other. And we stick on each other like glue. Flight break now. To avoid hitting each other in the air, the jets fly slightly below each other. Known as vertical separation, this must be maintained through all maneuvers, including loops and rolls. If we fly slightly below one another, if he was to come back, if he had an engine failure, or something came off the airplane and he hit a bird, and I was to jump forward, I wouldn't hit that airplane. Turn back now. Three, two, one. The formation is held together by one simple rule. Don't lose sight of Lee. The pilots have all been trained to follow Wilbur no matter what he does. Formation flying is about trust. You have to trust the lead pilot because you're not looking at the ground. There have been many cases of the lead flying a formation into the ground. I'm not quite 90 to the line yet. There was a very spectacular one with the Thunderbirds. He flew all four airplanes in the diamond into the ground. And that's the stuff that uh, you try not to think about when you're flying.
Ready. Turn back now. After a difficult morning, Wilbur gives the team an aggressive workout. Once I got in the jet, 475 increasing. I felt like it was back to business as normal. That was very nice, Wilbur. Thanks, bud. Wilbur, you got the birds right on the corner marker. I'll avoid to the right. Wilbur, you're clear to win. Points left base, three green. Two, three, four, five. Good practice. But on final approach, Scratch felt something hit his wing. And one, two, we just passed under a large bird. Yeah, that, that's a bird. Small there bird. was two big uh, Yeah, I know, I saw some flying around. It's not the first time for the Patriots. Jet 2 pilot Stash once hit a large hawk. It was a fairly hard impact, and uh, of course it broke the windshield. And uh, also some of the bird came through and hit me in the chest. But by far, the worst bird strike on the team happened in 2003. One of the hardest days in my life is when I lost a very close friend in one of my airplanes. A bird came through the windscreen and took out the pilot in the airplane turned into a fireball. We know it's a risky business, but this is what we do. This is our passion. Today, Scratch was lucky the bird was too small to do any real damage. Yeah, that, that's a bird. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, man. Have a good play. Thanks. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. With practice over, the team is ready for tomorrow's performance. And Wilbur is ready to race home to be with his family. I don't want to let the team down, but I don't want to let my family down either. So I'm going to go home and then come back tomorrow. Just trying to keep both those plates spinning, you know? In Fort St. John, weather conditions are right on the edge. Now, the show producer needs to decide if she should cut her losses and cancel. We'll do whatever it takes oh, to get it done, right? The only thing we can't control at the airport is the weather. It's like, please, just give me the window of opportunity to put this show on. As far as we're concerned right now, the show is still a go. OK, bye-bye. This is killing me. The first performance of the weekend is a rare evening show. With low weather like this, too, it gets darker quicker, so that can be dangerous. you got to be very careful. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. By 7 p.m., Air Boss Donna Flynn is ready to launch her first act. It's wet, it's cold, only a few hardy souls show up. This is not what Darlene wanted. We're gonna have the silver taxing here momentarily. Nine's gonna jump to the spare, and I think one through eight are gonna shut down where they are. Be five, six minutes. The snowbirds have a mechanical problem that delays the start of the show. Crap. So we're sliding now. As soon as one act is delayed, the whole rest of the show is delayed. It's getting dark. It's raining. We're running late. With the snowbird's late start. You know, it's dark. It's, it's drizzly and it's gray. And I'm right on the edge of my comfort zone. Dave's getting antsy. Hey, Dave, Super Dave. Just wondering uh, what time I should start. OK, we are about 10 minutes behind. See, we're way late. I don't know why can't these guys cut their show down a bit. We're kind of getting screwed now by everybody, so. Coming from the right, ladies and gentlemen, your snowbirds! Super Dave, show up. Go ahead, take off your discretion. Maybe a right turnout. OK, sounds good. You're losing all your visual cues when it's getting dark like that. When it gets wet, the aircraft will, will stall sooner. You know, the airplane can't do what it's designed to do if it's covered in water, and it's really dangerous. The wings of Dave's MX-2 are super smooth, designed for extreme aerobatics. Dirt, dust, even raindrops can disturb the airflow over the wings, causing the airplane to lose control without warning. 
house. He keeps it just above the ground. It'll stall at a lot higher speed. It can enter a spin when you don't uh, realize it. It can be difficult to come out of certain maneuvers. Rain is you know, deadly for an aerobatic airplane. Diving in for airspeed. Dave struggles to fly a tight routine, but the rain and dimming light may be too much. Supernay <laughs> Matheson, there he is. At the Fort St. John Air Show, Super Dave is performing in a dangerous combination of bad weather and fading light. Rain is, uh, you know, deadly for an aerobatic airplane. Here he comes across the sky. Dave does like to push it, but he doesn't go over the line. He may look it to other people, but he knows where his boundaries are. It's the first of two flights for Dave this evening. That was brutal. You can't see uh, I got no depth perception in this. I don't think it's safe. Dave vents with Pete. I couldn't see the line even. I couldn't even see the shoreline. There's, There's more coming. It's building. The weather, it was just crap. It's not good, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just getting darker. And more coming. Hey, OK, they're just going to recover and get off of the runway. Um, the ceiling looks like it's coming down a bit. Dave is faced with a tough decision. And they can see what it is, it's 1,500 feet and getting lower. The it's 1,500 on the mark. OK, I got to talk fast. 1,500 on the mark, I just can't see with that rain and with it getting dark. It's just for me, my wing it gets wet and gets uh, starts departing, so I'm going to scratch. I just don't think that's safe. The last thing you want to do is cancel and uh, you know let everybody down, but I want to live too. So the most important thing is safety. So I, I made a decision to cancel it. Yeah, OK. I always tell performers, if you're not ready to fly, don't fly. It's just a show. Well, that sucks, but it's better to be safe than uh, live to fly another day, I guess. You're going to scrub Dave Matheson. I want to fly and, and put on a show, but it's just not safe. So I just said I'm out. But Pete McLeod, who hasn't flown an air show in nine months, isn't ready to give up. Ready to do an air show. Like, OK, here it is, you know. Your airplane's ready, you're preparing, you're ready to go, here's your time. Hi, Pete. I was just calling to see what the schedule was. The airplane uh, is in the hangar, up front, ready to go. Yeah, we've got three miles, but uh, it's just not comfortable. It's still low, and it's still low, and still coming in. I'm scrubbing you. OK, bye. Bye. With a call like that from Donna, it makes my job easier, because I don't have to be the one that says I'm not going. It was disappointing, but it doesn't matter how much you want it. You can't, you can't will the weather. Oh, crap. If the weather doesn't clear tomorrow, the weekend will be a total loss for Pete McLeod. So once the Mustang lands, and we'll go. Once they're both ready, we'll go, and we're done. Donna is forced to scrub the entire show. Calling a show, when it gets like that, it's a pretty tough decision, because now it's affecting the gate. Pilots may not get paid. To go all the way up to northern BC with my ankle, with everything else that's happened, and not fly it would be just crushing. And that does conclude the first day of the Fort St. John International Air Show. Poor Darlene, I feel so bad. They could lose the show. The next morning, weather is also threatening the Patriots Air Show in sunny California. It's kind of surprising we got a lot of rain last night. The team's lead pilot is hundreds of miles away after responding to a family emergency. Hello. Hey, Hello. Wilbur. So I just looked at the current weather, and it's overcast. Is that still what you see up there? Yeah, that's what I see. It's, uh, it's right now on the deck. Until the clouds lift to 1,000 feet, Wilbur's trapped by a wall of weather. He's unable to get out, so I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do today. Broken 200, broken 600, broke, uh, overcast at 1,100. It's been changing rapidly in the last five minutes. 
If Wilbur can't make it back, Randy may have to choose between flying lead for the team or flying his MiG. It's the first throw in 11 years since the MiG's flown, and uh, Randy needs to be focusing on that, not focusing on whether or not Wilbur's gonna make it in here or not. It's day two of the Fort St. John Air Show. Where will you go, Donna? Producer Darlene Hamry needs better weather to make up for yesterday's rain out. If no one showed up today, it would hurt us a lot. But today's forecast calls for heavy winds. The wind could become a bit of an issue. Um, I think it's over 25 knots. Some of them can't fly. It's really blowing out here. For Pete McLeod, a second canceled performance would be another tough blow. To lose the first half of the season with a broken leg is putting the months behind. And if Pete does fly today, the high winds may be too much for his injured leg. The question still in my head, is my leg ready? You know, if you're 50 feet, 100 feet up, you just have the wind blowing you. But when you get down 30, 20, uh, you can get slammed around pretty good sometimes. Howdy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are ready to get underway. The forecast doesn't keep the crowds away. Go ahead, Mr. Dave. Ready to taxi down yet? Uh, down on the down under on the left. Yep, not a problem. Go ahead and taxi down. Super Dave is the first pilot to test the high winds. Dave pushes because this is it. He's put everything into this. Folks, if you look off to the left, you see that Super Dave's got the airplane slowed right down. The smoke has come on. Side slipping into the wind. I'll pitch the aircraft up 45 degrees and then punch top rudder and opposite stick and get the aircraft sashaying through the sky. Let's watch and see what Super Dave Matheson does. Just above. This is not what you'd expect an airplane to do. Dave battles through. Coming in from the right. Diving in. Every time I see him at a show, he's pushing. He wants to fly more. He wants to fly first. He wants to fly for his sponsor. He's driven. I want to give a quick shout out to a very special lady here, the producer of this show. Star, you are our queen, and we love you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 33rd edition of the California International Air Show. In Salinas, the air show is off, but the Patriots are still missing their lead pilot. We can only push it back so far before our day has to start. The backup has made its choice. First show in 12 years. The jet's ready, I'm ready, we're gonna go do it. As you look left, the 1959. MIG 17F. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your sights. Get those cameras ready. Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? That looked fun. I want to do that right there. I'll light that fire and ride that rocket to the sky right there. First performance since 9-11. Uh, Randy rockets the MiG to 600 miles an hour. Over 10,000 feet, ladies and gentlemen! With a little help from Afterburner that puts a 30-foot flame out the back, it's like a fire-breathing dragon, you know? Yeah, that's a clear cloud. <laughs> The FAA rules state that you can't fly through clouds during an aerobatic performance. So as I pulled vertical. I don't know if he's going to be able to pull it off. I see the hole that I want to go through. There's like a hole right there. He just went, he's right in the hole. Now he has to get back out of the hole. Got a visual. But before he can turn the MIG around, talk to him. Yeah, he's not answering. The hole 
closes. There's like a hole right there. He just went right in the hole. In California, Randy is lost above the clouds. Now he has to get back out of the hole. In his Russian rocket. Now I'm above the clouds. Can't see the airport. After blasting through a hole in full afterburner, Randy's running out of time. I don't know where he went. Low on fuel, he needs to land. If you go into clouds, you won't know which attitude you come out of the clouds at. You could be pointed straight down at the ground. And big airball. When Randy disappears, the show comes to a stop. No one knows where he went. Randy finds an opening. There he is. There he is. I got him. And drops through. It was fun for me. And I think it was fun for the folks on the ground, too, to see the MiG disappear. I hear you roar! We just ran our left downwind for 2 6 and we land here. There's a lot of clouds up there. You thought you got lost. I did. This is a very special time for me to get to fly the MiG again. Unbelievable. Randy's pulled off his dream flight, but his jet team is still missing its lead pilot. Having never flown the lead position, there's no way Randy should fly both acts. That means the show won't go on. Airbus Patriot 1, 2 mile at base 26. Finally, the Airbus receives the call everyone's been waiting for. 10 Patriot 1, you are clear to land, runway 26. Clear to land 26, Patriot 1. Wilbur arrives minutes before showtime. When I finally got underneath the weather, and saw Salinas and saw the airfield in front of me, it was a big relief, not just to me, but to the team, too. Your timing was absolutely perfect. I planned it that way. Well done. <laughs> Wilbur's here. Thank goodness. That's a sight for sore eyes. Now I got to hurry. Wilbur, I'd suggest you run. OK. <laughs> I'm tired because of the commute. I'm tired because of the amount of time keeping the family running. All right. Oh, man, am I glad to see him. OK, so the Salinas Air Show today, as we're sitting in the briefing room and preparing to go fly, all hell breaks loose outside. Here comes the wind. Oh, the canopy! A massive thunderstorm moves in. And just absolutely drenches the entire show. Kojak, you got the MIG all closed up? Talking to the air boss, Randy, he thinks that the weather's going to blow through here. Now, you know, we have a question here. Who are we actually flying a show for? There's nobody in the bleachers anymore. A lot of people have left. So I called the air show director and asked him what he wanted to do. Save the money. OK, we'll be there. Wave your hat, wave your hat. In Fort St. John, the sun is shining. It's amazing how a little bit of blue sky makes everything better. But high winds are putting pilots to the test. Wheels up at five after one. Four weeks ago, Pete McLeod's leg was still in a cast. But now his foot will be pushing hard on the rudder, battling the wind. Whenever you have high winds, that changes the flight path of the airplane and what you have to do. Coming to the first show, you know, to be honest with you, I don't have much confidence at all in uh, my physical situation. I've only been able to get in the plane for the last eight days to do aerobatics. Red Bull 84, go ahead, have a good one. Red Bull 84, clear left. That was probably the event in the last couple of years, even, that I've had the most questions in my mind about whether I was ready. Get ready for the best in the business. Red Bull 84, go ahead, have a good one.
After a disastrous start to his season with a broken leg, Pete launches his first air show in nine months. I need my feet flying freestyle aerobatics in the air show. I need to be able to go uh, full rudder, left, right. You need to be able to put a lot of force on that. Back on the stand, looking at the top side of the airplane. This is the way he starts his performance. I didn't know how much force I am actually putting on those controls until I tried to fly with basically a freshly healed broken leg. With his legs pushing hard on the rudder pedals. He is climbing for altitude. Every maneuver is a struggle against the wind. My leg really started to hurt. It just really started aching. He rolls out. He's going to roll it upside down. He's looking down at us now, folks. Beauty. Back on the stick, rolls inverted. Hanging in the straps, the blood rushing to the head. I want to be on that 500-foot line where everyone can see me up close. That's as close as I can come. With a high wind like that, it's definitely making you work to keep your show where you want to keep it. Pete holds nothing back, pushing his body and plane to the limit. Unleash the beast. Let's have a nice round of applause for your Canadian hero and youngest air show performer in Canada today, Mr. Pete McLeod and the Red Bull Edge 540. It's great to get the show in. You know, after a flight like that, I wish I could have done a few things different. Kind of tough conditions. My leg, yeah, it's hurting me. When I get down on the ground and after the flight, it feels like someone just kicked it a few times. Pete's refusal to give up has paid off. The air racer yeah, is back. I was really happy for Dar. You know, it's a huge effort to put an air show on and have us all up there. Pete doing his first show here, that made me extremely happy. We made money, that's what counts. We'll have another show. We live to do another show. In California, the jet team can breathe again. Wilbur will fly. Start engines. After a stressful weekend, Wilbur must put his entire focus on the show. Patriot one inbound. We are ready to start. Airbus Patriots are ready for departure. And Patriots ready for takeoff on eight, and the airspace is yours. Now, believe it or not, there's a there's a little bit of a crowd still left. Looking good on energy. Coming up 2,500, about 340. Live in the tip of the formation, it's your lead pilot, Dean Wilbur Rice. The lead position is very critical. Wilbur directs the team through their precise 25-minute performance. The lead has to be extremely predictable. He can't change speed suddenly. He can't bank the wing suddenly. All right, angle empty stick. I'm trying to sit about 98. Just hold it there. Solve everything with angles. He transmits his intentions. With the full. Those are all cues to us. Ready. Turn back now. That there's going to be a change. 450. There's Wilbur right here. Yeah. Oh, man. OK. Step too tight. There's a secret language of formation flying. Easily inside. Flop right now. It's not just about making the calls. We're rolling high out of the top. Red right now. It's about the cadence of it. It's about predicting the break. Perfect. Flight right now. It does come perfectly well to fly straight up right through. Crowd like that one. That was an awesome show. You have to be really happy with that, Wilbur. It was a hard weekend mentally for me, but I knew I still had a duty to get here, and for this to happen safely, it was best for me to be in the front seats. Glad we pulled it off. Yeah. Wilbur really impressed me this weekend. He had a lot going on, but really kept it together. Wilbur's a real leader. Next time on Air Show. 
The jet team dives into Reno. We're walking into the lion's den. And things go sideways. <laughs> Scariest moment of the season. Prepping to fly. The wing walker. Have you seen a fire truck? No crash fire today. Refuses to fly. We're standing oh, down. The guy that she was married to died in an airship. in the red. And a test flight <laughs> put Super Dave's life. Oh, crash Hang on. On the line. Ah.